So this is a good field to talk a little bit about the noxious weed law, which I think has probably been underutilized um, to manage certain weed issues. We have a noxious weed law in the state that lists a bunch of weeds that um, should not be allowed to reproduce, go to seed, um, or reproduce by other means. Palmer amaranth and water hemp are both on this list, which means um, they should be prevented from going to seed and propagating um, both within fields and also because you don't want that uh, water hemp or plumber to spread from that to other fields because once you start to let it go in a situation like this is being spread by combines um, and other types of equipment and animals and um, and things like that. So the way the noxious weed law works and this field's been a problem for a couple years so the adjacent growers and the people in the community have sort of been watching it um, and so um, it's an issue um, and they finally I think did uh, are trying to implement the noxious weed law. The way the noxious weed law works is um, uh, as a somebody complaining, you go to the trustees, you have to submit in writing a notice that, you know, someone's not controlling a noxious weed, and then the trustees have to act and, and also send something in writing to um, that person managing the field or the field owner, letting them know that they have five days to rectify that situation, which means either um, mowing or spraying or doing something to shut down seed production. So in the middle of this, that did happen here and the PPO inhibitor that was sprayed um, it really isn't gonna shut down seed production in this field. There's plenty of potential for seed production. We're August, second week of August, and so we're looking at lots of time still for these to regrow and produce a lot of seed. Um, and so the local people are kind of frustrated here. Um, and then, you know, the, the trustees have backup from the prosecutor's office in a county. Um, and so if something doesn't happen the right way there, in theory, then the prosecutor um, also gets involved. There can be a little bit of a breakdown there. I've talked to trustees occasionally who said, you know, we got to that point um, and all that happened and, the, and then the uh, person with the problem just refused to do anything and nobody would go any further with it, which is a possibility, but um, there is a, a uh, that's, that would be a breakdown in the whole <laughs> procedure there. Um, and there is a mechanism for the growers making the complaint to come back and file something else to force the trustees to act and then the trustees um, can come in and mow down a field um, and then I think build a landowner as well. So just an example of a situation that kind of went farther than it did but you know the purpose of the noxious weed law is to try to keep people from having situations like this that impact not only the immediate neighborhood but also um, you know a broader area because you know when this guy runs a combine through here and, and then goes in to other fields, he's going to obviously spread it. So this is how we have spread of water hemp going on.